Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Damini Devakar. On behalf of Infocom India and ICT Academy, I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Enhancing Pedagogy, the Tech-Powered Approach. This is a very interesting subject, and we will share expert insight on how our teaching evolved in this era of rapid tech change. This critical questions forms the crux of this webinar. Today, our invited experts will deliberate on with rapid technology advancements, what and how should we teach students nowadays? The future of curriculum and assessments in line with necessary future skills and discuss the shifts needed in pedagogy for the digital age and scrutinize the hits and misses of technology investments in education. They'll also cast an eye towards the future speculating about transformation of universities in the light of technology's rentless march forward. For today's session, would like to remind a few housekeeping rules. There will be a question answer session for which you can type your questions and send us via chat box. To best view the webinar, please select speaker view or hide non-video participants. With that, we will start the session by inviting Mr. Hari Balachandran, ICT Academy CEO, for welcome remarks and moderate the session. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Damini. Uh, good morning to all uh, who, have, uh, who are attending this session. And welcome to this session, the webinar on enhancing pedagogy, the tech-powered uh, approach. On behalf of ICT Academy and Infocom India, I welcome you all to this pre-show webinar on, on the topic, Enhancing Pedagogy, the Tech-Powered Approach. There's an excellent panel of speakers for this webinar, and I'm, I'm sure their insights would help all of us to understanding this better. My hearty welcome to my fellow co-panelists, our fellow panelists present on this call. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Dr. V.K. Ratan, Vice Chancellor of GNA University. Professor Ratan is having more than 40 years of experience in teaching research administration in reputed institutes like Punjab University. He served as an educationalist for more than three decades. He believes higher education is a matter of intense debate globally. Welcome, sir. I'll also like to welcome uh, Dr. S. Narayanan, Vice Chancellor of Kalasalingam University. Professor S. Narayanan has nearly 35 years of teaching at VIT, out of which 12 years as Pro Vice Chancellor at VIT and five years of industrial experience. He has contributed for more than 140 research papers in various reputed international national journals and conferences. He is a fellow of Institution of Engineers and a member of, of various professional societies like ASME, ISTE, and IIPE. Welcome you, sir. Uh, we also have Dr. K. N. S. Acharya, Professor and Pro Vice Chancellor Geetam uh, at the Bangalore campus. Dr. K. N. S. has a unique blend of professional experience spanning academia and industry over 37 years. In his role as an academician, he has scaled through the roles of lecturer, assistant professor, professor, and dean of postgraduate education with Indian and overseas university partners. Over the last 20 years, he has served as a senior management leader at leading organizations like Honeywell, Infosys Limited, KPIT, and the latest being LNT Technology Services. Welcome, sir. We also have Mr. Saurav Chakravarti, General Manager, Samsung. Mr. Saurav Chakravarti is the General Manager of Samsung Electronics uh, Private Limited. With 20 years of experience, with more than 20 years of experience, he has, he has made his name in the audiovisual industry in India and sought after trainer and provident and a very prominent AV specialist. He is passionate about audiovisual industry and has successfully spearheaded multiple prestigious Pan India projects. During his free time, he plays, he loves playing badminton and is an ardent reader. I welcome, I extend my warm welcome to all the senior leaders from industry, academia who have joined this session. Thanks, Infocom sir. India, in association with ICT Academy, has been, has been organizing this pre-show webinars uh, and the Infocom India Summit for the last four years. This show brings together world's leading technology innovators to meet with channel partners and vertical market institutional users 
from across all of Asia, at the same time delivering industry leading learning opportunities for all attendees. We are close to 400 delegates from academia participating in this virtual event. And the main event is scheduled at the Geo World Center in Mumbai in the, in the month of September, 2023. This panel discussion comes at a very pertinent time when advancements of technology has been rapid and very impactful. Enhancing pedagogy through technology powered approach involves leveraging technology to improve teaching and learning experiences in educational setting. Technology can play a significant role in tra transforming traditional teaching methods, making education more engaging, accessing, accessible and effective. However, technology is not, is not as, as all pervasive as we think and hence they must be kept in mind, especially when we are talking about developing nations, which are many regions in the rural and semi-rural areas. However, there are many aspects of tech power learning that enhance the pedagogy. It could be personalized learning, interactive content, online collaboration, gamification, blended learning, virtual reality and augmented learning, data-driven insights from the learning process, access to information, assistive technology, and teacher and professional teacher professional development. After the outbreak of the COVID-19, there has been significant increased interdependence on education and technology, fostering innovation and outside the box thinking among learners. According to the Gallup survey, 81% of teachers believe digital learning tools add great value, with 57 agreeing that they are effectively able to personalize learning experience for their students. Lockdown opportunities for EdTech, but challenges accompany many, many increasing capabilities. Educators may use additional training to provide best learning experience as learners adapt quickly to the new technologies. Institutions must enhance that and ensure that teachers are skilled in using and troubleshooting tech both in in-person and remote environments. Building strategic partnerships is crucial, especially to benefit students with learning dis disabilities. Technology tools are creating inclusive learning environments and addressing inequalities. Partnering with tech companies can cater to students with diverse learning needs. Acknowledging the indispensability of technology in educational institutions are integrating tech-based solutions. Successful implementation relies on well-informed decisions during the execution. Making educational decision making private pivotal in the process. With this context, in my mind, I once again welcome all the for all for this session and invite panelists to share the initial thoughts on the topic. May I now invite Dr. V.K. Ratan, Vice Chancellor GNA, to share his opening remarks before we get to the others to share their opening remarks. Dr. V.K. Ratan, please. Good morning to all and uh, thank you to Infocom for, and ICT for giving me a chance to speak on this platform. The topic for today, Enhancing Pedagogy, that is the tech-powered approach. This is the current topic and uh, this is a very burning topic because we are changing. The technology is changing very fast and we have to move according to this. In the recent years, the rapid advancement of technology has reshaped various aspects of society, including the education. The integration of technology in pedagogy has given rise to new era of teaching and learning. Uh, the tech-powered approach in education involves utilizing digital tools, online resources, innovative platforms to enhance the teaching and learning experience. The this explores the various ways in which technology can enhance pedagogy, providing a more personalized, engaging, effective learning for students and educators. One of the significant advantage of tech-powered approach is its potential to cater to individual learning styles and preferences. Traditional one-size, first-all teaching methods often fail to address the diverse needs of the students. However, 
the technology offers adaptive learning platforms, artificial intelligence algorithms, analyze individual learning patterns, and adjust the content accordingly. Students received personalized content. The traditional one-size-fits-all teaching methods often fall to address the diverse needs of the students. However, technology offers adaptive learning platforms and artificial intelligence algorithms and analyze the individual platforms. This personalized learning approach fo fosters a deeper understanding of the material and increases student engagements and innovations. The technology enables also educators to create interactive and engaging content that captures students' attention, educational videos, animations, simulations, virtual reality experiences bring abstract concept to life, making learning more enjoyable and memorable. Interactive quizzes, gamified learning activities make the learning process fun, encourage students to actively participate and retain information effectively. The integration of multimedia resources not only enhances the learning experience, but also appeals to different learning styles, making education more inclusive and accessible to all. Technology breaks down geographical barriers and enables students to connect and collaborate with peers from around the world. Virtual classrooms, online discussion forms, video conferencing tools facilitate meaningful academic exchange and cultural interactions. Students can engage in collaborative projects with their counterparts from different countries, broadening their perspective and promoting cross-cultural understanding. The exposure to diverse perspectives foster critical thinking and prepare students to become global citizens in an increasing interconnected world. The tech-powered approach empowers educators with valuable data and insight into students' performance and progress. Learning management systems and data analytics tools provide real-time information on individual student achievements, participation levels, and the areas for improvement where we can take the help of the technology for its uh, the improvement of the students in those areas. This data-driven approach enables teachers to identify struggling students, offer target support, adjust their instruction strategies accordingly. Teachers can also track the effectiveness of various teaching methods and materials, continuously refining the pedagogical approach for better outcomes. Technology not only benefits students, but also offers the opportunities for continuous professional development for educators. Online courses, webinars, virtual conferences allow teachers to upgrade their skills, stay up to date with the latest educational trends exchange best practices peers worldwide. The integration of technology in teacher training programs enhances educators' digital literacy, empowers them to harness the full potential of technology and classroom effectively. While the tech-powered approach presents numerous benefits, there are also challenges that educators and policymakers have to address. Firstly, the digital divide may hinder equal table access to technology and internet connectivity in the unserved communities. Efforts must be made to bridge this divide and ensure that all students have equal opportunity for equal education. Secondly, there is a concern about over-reliance of technology, potentially leading to decrease in face-to-face -face interactions and essential social skills. Striking a balance between technology integration and traditional teaching methods is crucial to maintain a holistic approach to education. In the opening remarks, the, I will conclude concluding by saying the tech-powered approach has transformed pedagogy, offering a new era of personalized, interactive, and globalized learning experiences. By leveraging technology, Educators can tailor their teaching to meet the individual needs of the students 
create engaging content and fossil collaborations on the global scale. Data-driven insights provide valuable feedback for continuous improvement, while professional development opportunities empower teachers to navigate to digital landscape effectively. As a technology continues to advance, embarrassing its potential and addressing its challenges will lead to more inclusive and effective education system, preparing students for success in ever-evolving world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was quite a quite an interesting insight into uh, the enhancing pedagogy, the tech-powered approach. May I now invite Dr. S. Narayanan, Vice Chancellor, Kalasilingam University, to share his opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Hari. Very good morning to all of you. I'm extremely happy to participate in this wonderful webinar conducted by ICT Academy and Infocom India. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Enhancing the pedagogy, tech-powered approach is the order of the day that was pointed out by the previous speakers. So what strategies we have to adopt? I thought I can share some of my thoughts in my opening remarks. The first strategy I think is the curriculum for technology-driven future. We have to design our curriculum in such a way that it has to be technologically driven. In fact, we must motivate all our colleagues, faculty members to prepare the e-contents or the e-materials, learning materials. We must also request them or motivate them to prepare video lectures. They must also, in, I mean, incorporate simulation tools and things like, like that so that their lectures can be made more interesting. They have to prepare all these lectures and they, we must have a proper LMS. Either we have to develop on our own or we must have a commercialized LMS. We must have an LMS at our institute. All these e-learning materials, e-contents, all these things have to be uploaded and everything can be downloaded by the students. So even the assignments, the students can upload in our LMS and we have to download and we have to do. This in turn will save our time and it will increase our efficiency and it will increase our transparency also. The next strategy I think is assessment part. The assessment also, we have to make it online or we have to make it automatic. For example, quizzes in our institute, we are using the platform called Kahoot. So like that, there are many platforms. So we can conduct quizzes online. That will save our time and it will be made more interesting. So if you conduct virtual, I mean, if you conduct manually, the student may not be interested. But if you conduct virtually using this platform, they will be more interested and they will do it perfectly. The assessment also, we can make it online. Previously, there was an attempt. The students were writing their I mean, the answers, even in the final examination, end semester examination on the tablets. And we used to have these materials in the cloud and the faculty can download and they can correct. Now, what we do in our institute is we are asking the students to write it in papers only. Then we are scanning it and we are putting it in the cloud. And the faculty, they can download and they can correct it at their own space, at their own laptop and so on. And after some time, once the correction assessment is over, it is open to the students. We are making it transparent. The online, well, I mean, the re-evaluation, and if there is any mistake, the students think that they can get more marks. They can go through that, they can offload, and they can go through that, and they can put their comments there. And it is directly, it directly goes to the faculty, and they have to answer to that. If the students comments, for the students, they may ask for more marks, but if it is justifiable, then only the faculty are giving marks. The next best approach is, we are also thinking of using AI in our assessment that we are trying now. The next strategy I am thinking is digital age teaching methodologies. So it has been pointed out by the previous speakers also, blended learning. This has become the order of the day because of the pandemic. We are all used to online. We never thought about online learning at all a few years ago. But everybody, now these meetings are conducted online. 
Everybody is using online meetings, online learning, online teaching, and so on. And the blended learning, we can invite the experts. For example, in our institute, we are inviting the industry experts and international experts also. Sometimes they may be able to come to come to our institute physically, but sometimes they may not be able to come. But now it has become easier. They are offering the courses online. Industry experts, even the international experts, they are online the credited courses also. Some modules of the courses they are offering. The other one is, the other two important tools are project-based learning and experiential learning. In our country, only few institutes are using these tools, especially IITs and some leading institutes, including our institute. We are using these tools. We have a unique feature called Excel, experiential learning and service learning. In our curriculum, especially our BTEC students, not only our BTEC students, other students also. Our students are doing projects from second year onwards. They take up community-oriented projects, they take up societal problems, and they take up industry problems. Some of the industries, they have established their centers at our institute, and our students are working on the industry problems, live problems in the institute itself, and some of the companies, they are e even treating our students as interns. Our students are getting very good experience, on hands-on experience. The next approach, as it was pointed out by my previous speaker, we can have personalized learning approach also. Depending on our students, we can personalize their learning. The next best tool is game-based learning. It is also an important tool which is coming up very, I mean, very fluently in the industry now, in the teaching industry now. We can motivate our teachers to use these game-based tools, game-based learning. So the teachers can target the concepts how the concepts can be used to solve the real world problem. They can design their curriculum or their strategy like that, games like that. Students will be more interested because they will be more interested in solving games, thereby they can solve the problems also. But if you want to implement all these things, all these techniques, we have to invest. In terms of investment, we have to develop our hardware. We must have more hardware. We have to develop our software tools and we must have lecture capturing system. In our institute, Kalasalingam University, we have many of the classrooms provided with lecture capturing systems, and we must have studios also. We have one of these studios. And talking about the final point, future universities. You know, you, you would have looked at the world ranking, QS world ranking, or THE world ranking, or Shanghai world ranking, including the IITs and IICs. Only 30 to 40 institutes, Indian Institute, even though we have more than 1,500 universities and more than 10,000 to 15,000 colleges, only 30 to 35 institutes and universities, including the IITs, are there in the world ranking, featuring in the world ranking. But if you want to reach the world ranking, if you want to implement all these things, then only we can reach the world ranking. For that, what we have to do? The first major thing, I think, in my opinion, we have to strengthen our industry institute interaction. I have pointed out some of the things which we are practicing in our institute. We must have proper industry institute interaction. We must involve all the industry, I mean the nearby industries or the collaborators in our curriculum designing. Not only that, in teaching, we can call it as co-teaching. The, the industry experts, now it has become, as I told you earlier, it has become easier now. They can teach online. So we can involve them. That is one thing. And we have to invite more industries. Industry, I think some industry experts are also here. The industries also, they have to come forward and they have to give their problems, industry problems, as a test case to the institutes first. If we are not able, if we are able to deliver on time solutions to them on time, then the industry will have confidence and they can give us more problems. And nowadays, the institutes, the academicians, the students, they are doing they are solving all these problems. They can give their problems to the institute and the students at their own pace. And I mean, on time also, they, we have to deliver. Students and faculty, they can work and they can solve all the problems and they can deliver. The other one is internalization. Internalization is a very important aspect. All the universities in the UK system and US system, they have gone 20, whatever they have practiced 20 years ago, we are practicing only now. So we have to collaborate with those advanced universities, top, top class universities, world ranking universities. And we have to invite the faculty from there and they can also teach online and we have to collaborate with them and we have to send our faculty to these international universities 
and our faculty have to be trained in all these teaching pedagogies and also in collaborative research and our students also they must be motivated they must be they must be motivated to go to those universities for semester abroad program for doing their courses now this nep has given all this flexibility we can consider credit transfer and we have to encourage our students and faculty to go to the universities abroad and we must be on par with the other university then only our teaching system can improve our teaching pedagogy can be enhanced then only we can become world class institution with this i would like to stop my initial remarks thank you for your thank kind you. attention uh, thank you sir thank you sir uh, can i now request uh, dr kns acharya pro professor and pro vice chancellor geetam bangalore campus to share yes. his uh, opening remarks thanks sir i think uh, the opening remarks are really keep it very very brief uh, it has to be an opening remark uh i think the fundamental challenge that i see today is uh, the role of teacher in the whole of uh, education has significantly changed all right i think as a teaching community uh, universities and faculty need to understand that the earlier days of uh, teaching and learning methods and today's learning methods are completely changed that is the first challenge that we need to address second the generation of uh, students that we are addressing is a very different generation of students who are very well at times at times very well informed than teachers themselves so the advent of technology has impacted more of student learning rather than the teacher teaching unless we address that issue i don't think we are going to solve the issue of the uh, expectations of the industry of students graduating uh, from the institutions third most important one in especially in the classroom uh, environment the role of a teacher has transformed from being a, a rote teacher to a more of a facilitator how do you use relevant technologies in pedagogy keeping the sessions more interactive bringing in live examples making them more applied education these are the challenges that uh, technology enabled education and education is must address these are the three important points that i feel we should discuss deliberate and move ahead rest of the things the two previous speakers spoke about they are all well known and those problems are being addressed in multiple forums that's where my brief opening remarks are uh, thank you dr sharia that was really brief and very pertinent to the discussion um I, i still remember attending a conference some time back where one of the speakers mentioned that the role of the teacher from being a sage on the stage has now become a guide by the side model and uh, that i think is very pertinent to the entire teaching learning process but dr acharya one of the questions that constantly keeps coming up is that with rapid technology advancement shaping the educational landscape what skills and competencies do you believe should be prioritized in the modern day student curriculum and why yeah again a very pertinent uh, hari let me try to see how quickly i can communicate what i want to i think there are uh, two aspects to be considered one from so student centric side and second one from the faculty centric side all right if you look at student centric side what we are lacking today is uh, the basic basic foundational skills are weak on top of that we are trying to build too many other skills now as long as the education systems focuses on having a very strong foundation and technology adds as a uh, as a catalyst to enhance their learning that will be the fantastic model i'll give you one or two examples now without some the two basic skill basic uh, skills that i feel students are lacking today is a strong communication skills in english second mathematical skills if these two skills are there the science and engineering and other these skills can be uh, enhanced now how do we use technology to teach mathematics for example now gone are those days where teachers have to write from one corner of the board to other corner of the board to the mathematical equations and bore them saying that what does mathematics mean now today you have a lot of mathematics teaching tools like let's say matlab simulink um, where there are application oriented mathematics is necessary a teacher teaching mathematics can teach an impact of say a, a dynamic equations how do you relate it to physical world now students want to learn how 
application of these fundamental topics is seen in the physical world right that is a student centric uh, first uh, option the second one is we are teaching too many things now students by the time they graduate we must understand if you are if i am talking about a four year engineering education starting from the first year to fourth year by the time he starts his education by and by the time he graduates he, he uh, the entire spectrum of technology would have changed in a four year span of four years are we preparing students to adopt technology adapt technology or are we killing them with technology right so as long as we prepare them to adapt technology quickly as it evolves i think we have won the battle are they able to learn quickly anything that is thrown at them learnability as a key skill that should be the one of the foundation from education institutions rather than giving rote learning rote uh, examinations etc right so two second point is too many teaching too much of teaching we are doing too many assessments too many assessment mid term assessment this assessment the, so students are basically preparing for assessments rather than understanding the topic and application so how can we you leverage technology to better uh, make them better enjoy the learning process M doing mistakes is fine right our education system must evolve how to make the learning process whole enjoyable and with less of assessment the last one is uh, siloed education uh, most of the uh, education systems till now have been very siloed when i say siloed uh, if you take uh, psychology as a subject if you take english language as a uh, subject if you take uh, uh if you take engineering mechanical engineering or civil all of them have been taught in silos but today the world outside is highly interdisciplinary now unless we bring in interdisciplinary learning and can a mechanical engineer learn on ev technologies can he learn on software technologies unless our mechan mechanisms open up and enable technology led learning through these interdisciplinary skills we will be doing we will be doing great injustice because by the time they graduate they are already obsolete right and these are my uh, opening remarks there are models available which uh, you know so many universities have adopted we are also evolving and national education policy and the mhrd uh, ugc are doing a fantastic job of allowing institutions to prosper and it is for the universities to grab those opportunities and recast the whole education system leveraging technology that is my opening remark thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Uh, dr ratan as educators how do we strike a balance between incorporating cutting edge technology in classroom while ensuring fundamental principles of learning and critical thinking are not compromised yes uh, 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 the as a educator the balance has to be maintained between this uh, technology and the education so that the fundamental principles and the critical thinking uh, is not ignored we have to compromise we we are changing from one phase to another phase so to change from one phase to another phase uh, it is uh, we have to take many steps as uh, professor acharya has also told the teaching mathematics the student says mathematics is 2 into 2 4 but we have to tell them that with the help of technology we can go deep into to how the 2 2.00 or 2.9 how how we have to multiply or it can be application so the there are some strategies initial stage we have to take at the university levels the one is the purposeful integration the integration technology should be integrated into the classroom with clear purpose and intentions educationists must identify the technological tools which tools we should use to enhance the learning outcomes the outcome should be there the uh, sport critical thinking it, the student should be made that he should start thinking rather than using technology for its novelty alone we have to bring the concept of critical thinking into the students emphasize critical think thinking this uh, uh, this uh, critical thinking emphasization can be done with the technology to vast amount of information you see today the information is vast available on internet on google 
the students can download any amount of data. It is very, all the libraries, all books, they are available. The, but it is essential to emphasize the development of critical thinking skills to evaluate, analyze the information very critically. And that we have to encourage the students to question sources, examine biases and draw informed conclusions. This All this has to be taken into their education or curriculum. Blend technology and traditions rather than viewing technology as a replacement. That we have to replace the current teaching methods with the technology. Educators can blend two approaches harmoniously. We have to blend both the to keep a balance, integrate technology in ways to complement and enrich the classroom interactions, discussions, hands-on learning experiences. Encourage the active learning. The leverage technology to promote active learning experiences such as interactive simulations, collaborative projects, online discussions. We can give the students a project where a student sitting here can also discuss those with his friends sitting in America with the, with the help of this technology. So the, this activate learning, this encourage the active learning to the students. Active engagement also stimulates the critical thinking and problem solving uh, abilities of the students. Now the Next strategy should be the foster uh, digital citizenships. Educate students about responsible and ethical use of technology, including proper citation of the sources, respect for intellectual property rights, and online etiquettes. Promoting good digital citizenship and ensures that technology is used responsibility and thoughtfully. So this is also very important. The another strategy can be professional development. The providing ongoing professional development opportunities for teachers also. We have to provide in using the technology effectively. With this, we can equip them with skills and knowledge necessary to integrate the technology advancements into their teaching practices. Then uh, another can be the balance the screen time. Strive to maintain a balance between the screen time and other types of learning experiences. Encourage offline activities also. We have to encourage physical exercises, face-to-face -face interaction to ensure a well-round education environment. Of course, the online is there, but offline also, we have to encourage the, and we have to balance the screen time. The student center approach can also be kept to focus on the needs of the students and their learning goals. The, it will support the individual learning styles and preferences, fostering personalized learning experiences. So these, by applying these, this, these strategies, educator can harness the potential of cutting edge technologies to enhance learning outcomes with preserving the essential principles of teaching sure. and critical thinking. Thank you, sir. So uh, uh, Dr. Narayanan, uh, you know, in this area of uh, information overload, it is crucial for students to discern between credible sources and think critically about information they consume. How, how can we equip students with digital literacy skills to navigate this vast ocean of online uh, data? Because um, we see that there is so much of information available and the ability to discern between credible sources and, in, and not so credible sources is something that we need to equip our students with. So what yeah. are your thoughts on this, sir? Yes, yeah, it's a very good question. So as you have rightly pointed out, there are a lot of information available and a lot of contents are available and students will be able to go beyond their limit and they'll be, I mean, working only on the internet. So if you look at the learning, there are two types of learning. One is the related to their course of study, if they are students, their course of study and their programs. So as in my opening remarks, I was just pointing out, we must have, related to their course of study, 
we must have proper e contents proper materials developed by the teachers and the institutes they must have some lms and they have to upload first the students have to focus only on those e materials and in addition to that we have to tell the students they have to refer only to the concerned websites where they can get the relevant information we have to train the students and we have to motivate them it's very difficult they may go beyond that but we have to tell them if it is with related to these subjects and their courses of study if it is beyond the courses of study we must understand their potential we must have personalized approach we must know their area of interest depending on their area of interest we must motivate them personally we must have a personalized approach and we have to motivate them only in go, go into the references where their interest of study or their areas of interest are available so they can refer we have to do in such a way that they have to refer only those websites those materials and they need not go beyond that they need not waste their time in the unwanted things this is my answer thank you thank you very much sir. that was very crisp but one of the things that um, in the recent past has been uh, the fascination towards chat gpt with the rise of infra artificial intelligence and automation the job market is evolving very very rapidly how can we adapt our teaching methods to empower students with resilience and adaptability needed to thrive in the ever changing technological landscape uh, dr acharya can start and then the others can also uh, share their thoughts on this because this is of great fascination for a lot of people and a lot of teachers uh, seem a little concerned uh, with the advent and the improvisations on chat gpt from chat gpt 2.0 to chat gpt 4.0 so there's a lot of uh, anxiety there's a lot of doubt there's a lot of curiosity a whole lot of emotions around it so sir could you please share your thoughts on how can we adapt the teaching methods to empower students sure uh, in fact the whole uh... webinar could have been restricted only one this this one question such an interesting question and i know i'm not going to hog the entire lime limelight because we have been discussing about this in multiple forums so uh, three four important points i'll cover and if there some people are interested later on we can have an open debate on that number one before we start transforming students i think the time has come for teachers to transform themselves The, the most fundamental foundational shift that is happening and as teachers and teaching community people have to understand that something radical is coming if you start shunning that if you are start hating that we are actually shooting in our foot right so the other day i was speaking to a couple of professors from uh, iit my own um, teachers and colleagues from overseas universities universities have already started embracing ai led teaching chat gpt led teaching in their sessions right universities have already have started offering courses how do you do your chat gpt in in the uh, technology led education so uh, before asking students uh, not to bring uh, not to use chat gpt etc they had that we had to various how do i use it for a betterment of education that is point number 1 point number 2 is technology will always keep you evolving and uh, as teachers who have done teaching in the early 70s to 80s to 90s to 2000s people people who were using their notebook written notes to slide changers to ppts to videos to now chat gpts this evolution is continuous so better evolve better adopt now there is definitely an adage that you cannot take out a teacher from the process of learning you cannot so chat gpt is it going to replace the teacher in the whole process of learn and teaching and learning process answer is no it will not it cannot so but if we don't adopt those things in our teaching and learning process we will become obsolete the teachers will become become obsolete that is the second um, key message now uh, the question is how couple of uh, members whom i have spoke i gave an example for example i used to teach for many years both in the industry as well as here um, in the education institutions then consulting on say uh, a model based design which is a control system based system right now if you pose that kind of a problem to chat gpt it throw it throws certain answers at you now 
how i want to adopt in uh, adopt the same thing in my teaching and learning could be that i will encourage students to use chat gpt to solve the control systems problem let us see whether it is going to solve that problem now the solution offered by chat gpt may or may not be 100% correct one of the assessments or assignments that i might give it validate the result given by chat gpt chat gpt cannot validate it will give you a solution validation is left to us now the arguments on which the student builds his validation of the solutions will will tell me whether the student has understood the subject matter topic etc or not right that is the point number one how do i adopt second one if i am teaching some certain kind of uh, say hardware in the loop design where you, you need to uh, write a lot of scripts using python or uh, any of capital scripting etc i can ask um, uh, uh, chat gpt to generate a, uh, a a code which will enhance my productivity i will ask the students using chat gpt and without chat, using chat gpt how much of productivity improvement you have achieved show me so by doing this by the time a student graduates he would know if he were to do he or she were to do independently if they were to use adopt a technology how their productivity improvement will happen will be known to them now i can go on and on there are multiple examples so the summary for me is please don't shun technology please don't shun ai technologies they are going to hear they are, they are going to be here to help us enhance the pedagogy and assessment and encourage students to embrace it more and more don't fear about it and work around to see whether the tool can be used for better pedagogy or not again the last sentence i want to close is teachers have to we have to first point fingers at teachers before we start pointing fingers at students unless teachers transform themselves and the pedagogy method we can't transform the students that's my answer for that thank you thank you sir uh dr narayanan uh, if you could share your thoughts on this yeah. that with the rise uh, of artificial intelligence and automation yeah uh, yeah yes uh, our uh, my colleague was clearly pointing out that chat cpt will give you a number of solutions and the students have to validate that if they are validating if it is justified they have to use their credit creativity for validating the solution then only the even though the tools are giving number of solutions the students must be able to find out the exact solution and he must be able to justify that for that he has to use his creativity even though the tools are there even in the industry the ai tools are there and they are going to use ai widely probably from few years from now they are going to use it but manpower is also required intelligence is required manual it's the intelligence of the men are required to find out the best solution that is my answer for this thank you sir uh, dr ratan any thoughts you have on this uh, with the advent of ai and uh, automation and the job market evolving uh, how do we adopt our teaching methods to empower students for resilience and adaptability uh, for this ever changing technological landscape sir yeah uh, i i support uh, dr arya we have to first uh, uh, give uh, train our teachers right the training of the teachers is very important you see what the education institute see is the flipped classroom model yes now because the uh, Uh, the data as i have already told the data available is in very large amount the students whatever we have been teaching we have been taught we have been teaching on the classroom on a chalk and board but uh, and the students were noting the no, uh, taking the notes they were uh, remembering and just appearing for the exam target was to uh, only giving the exam and getting the marks and then getting and nothing no sort of learning or whatever they were not bothered but now the flip the data is available once the teacher starts teaching the students say we will download this whole data or this whole equation the derivation of the equation is available on the net so we can download and we can see so flipped classroom technology 
has to come. The teacher has to involve, we have to involve the methods with the help of technology. The technology is very fast changing that we all agree. There are many advantages, disadvantages also. In the flipped classroom, the, uh, you give the question or you give this chapter, we will we have to study this. Let them come prepared from their, uh, uh, the internet or they can download the data about that and they can think. And then the class part should be for the discussions, for discussions and question and answer session so that all can physically discuss also. And then out of the data which, which they have downloaded, that uh, which is the how to analyze the data, what they have for a particular area or for a particular problem, we can analyze this. So flipped classroom is there. So this will also involve the online platforms, the online discussion platforms, uh, then the incorporate technology, we have uh, to incorporate guest lectures, invited lectures also there. The projects, online projects, problems can be there and sitting there, they, the government has also taken the initiative. We, there are many platforms where the student can also learn. MOOC is there, NEPTEL is there. So they, they can learn and they, they can see how a teacher from the best institute, maybe from IIT or sitting in America, how he teaches, he can also listen to him. These are the advantages of technology. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we've run out of time. We actually exceeded time. Uh, but we tried covering a whole spectrum of uh, ideas that um, very eminent speakers on this panel shared today. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for your inputs. The student-centric approach, the faculty-centric approach, I think is uh, very important. The importance of teachers also upgrading their set of skills in the teaching learning process would make a definite impact because the student is constantly evolving and his uh, propensity to adopt technology and use technology as a great enabler for his learning process, no matter what the field is, has been very significant. And I'm sure all the inputs today have been very interesting from my perspective. And I thank all the panelists for sharing their inputs in this meeting. Uh, with this, we conclude uh, the, um, some questions would be there. We'll try answering on the chat. We will try answering them on the chat itself or later we'll send the responses back. But thank you very much for your time and I hand it over back to Damini. Thank you so much, Mr. Balachandran for moderating such an amazing session. I would also like to take a moment to thank our esteemed panelists, Dr. V.K. Ratnan, Dr. S. Narayanan, and Dr. K. N. S. Acharya for a very insightful discussion. I am sure that our audience today have tremendously uh, benefited from this discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now, now like to welcome Mr. Saurabh Chakraborty. He is General Manager for Samsung Electronics Private Limited with over 20 plus years of experience. He has made his name in audio video industry in India as a sought after trainer and prominent AV specialist. On behalf of Samsung, he will present his case study on how we should teach students in digital age. Over to you, Mr. Chakraborty. So <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yes, after such an esteemed guest, it's really tough to speak on uh, education. But as a technology partner uh, where we produce hardware, it is important to uh, club this solution, whatever the esteemed panelist has told. Let me share my screen to show you something which we have done. Okay. Uh, so, yes, uh, as I told, uh, we are from Samsung India and we are speaking about technology. So when we are speaking about technology, uh, there will be hardware, there will be software, as all esteemed panelists told, we have to uh, intermingle between hardware, software, how much technology is needed and how much technology has to be excluded on this education, which is very important. So how as Samsung, we see education market and we see uh, how the environment is developing. 
so what we see is digital digitalization in education is not an option now but a must yes we have to adopt it and unless we adopt it we will be left behind on the global forum so uh, what are the thing which are coming on digitalization is new learning trend which all the panelists have been uh, speaking about yes the teachers has to adjust the student has to adjust because when we are talking about the education system now we are teaching the millennials because everybody who is in college on higher education or on primary education are all born in this millennium so we who are teachers we we who are developing these options developing this solution has to match a millennium guy so the trends are changing second everybody spoke about there are lot of data if there is lot of data you need a campus connectivity also because only a classroom will never give you a sufficient thing to develop and give you all the data last but not the least which samsung always prefer is health and safety top of mind somebody talk about digitalization somebody talk about technology but technology also brings some health and safety uh, concern also which is uh, the data security and other thing so what as samsung what we do is very simple we divide uh, the experience into three part first obviously inside the classroom you can see left which is basically a hybrid classroom where uh, teachers is teaching uh, offline to uh, students who are teaching st uh, sitting there and also to a uh, uh, remote students who are connected through online so that's the first digitalization which we are doing second is around the campus because obviously when you are talking about such of data you need to digitalize a complete campus because students will not be restricted uh, they are all millennium guys they will not be restricted only on the classroom they can study from anywhere so you have to digitalize the campus and third obviously the safety and security so what we are suggesting as a technology partner yes obviously you have to elevate the classroom experience which has to be comfortable to both teachers and student rethink the school wide communication because when you are uh, doing a digitalization you have to think on a school wide communication you cannot concentrate that only on a classroom and last is build a safer learning space because uh, your data is your ip if your data is getting lost if your data is copied then that's very bad so we need to be safe on data and we need to be restricting them to use on a particular way now going forward uh we are a display company so obviously we are eyes to see the world whatever technology you implement whatever lms people talk, talked about lms people talked about mathematical tools people talk about any tools but to teach you need to have a display you need to have eyes to see the world because unless you have a display or uh something to show the first step of digitalization doesn't start otherwise we'll be same on the back portion uh 20 years back or 5 years back where we were teaching on a uh, blackboard second as samsung we understand ki samsung dna is innovation so when we are talking innovation when we are talking about our product we think on both perspective not only on the perspective of the technology which the students are accepting also on technology where to teachers can easily come into board because when a transformation every panelist told there has to be a transformation of the teachers but that transformation should be the easiest for them because they are our one of the pillar of technology one of the pillar of education so if we cannot give them a product which is very comfortable to them and which can just give them a non digital to digital transformation without any a uh, very uh, sophisticated or very uh, technical thing it should be easy transformation then teacher will adopt this digitalization very fast and the teachers obviously uh, uh, can convert a complete uh, education system into a digitalized mode so next uh, is we work through all those things and innovation never stops so how samsung innovates on this is what we thought is what on a school how samsung will build your digital schools so what we did is we found on a school where samsung can help you obviously the first is inside the classroom where uh, we can give you all the solution be it on a 
a hybrid classroom or be it on a standalone classroom we can make a personal study room that's basically like everybody told the libraries are becoming digital libraries uh, the there is so much of data everybody is talking about online exam everybody is talking about uh, online checking so those data has to be kept separate so you can have personal study room you have auditoriums because some panelists told yes you have to uh, bring uh, the uh, an industry expert into that and explain them so when you are bringing an industry expert it cannot be for a single classroom you will have the complete campus or at least uh, five six classroom attending together so you will have a auditorium for that you should have outside the classroom digital experience also for your students gets habituated with this digital transformation which are basically on the entrance where you know the complete classes what is happening when it is happening what is your classroom you have halfway where you can uh, find your classrooms you can find what are the courses which are happening on what classroom and you can attend that and obviously last is outside the lecture room which knows exactly what classes are going on so we know ki this is not easy in india because obviously some uh, of the panelists told there is a investment so when you are talking about a investment it needs to be balanced with how much technology investment you are doing and how much education investment you are doing so to balance that as samsung we thought is only product will not help you we need to give a concept ki okay if you are doing something how much technology you have to invest and where you have to invest because the uh, as a oem as a technology expert the first question we uh, face from a college or from a, a institute is where should we start so what we did is we divided this campus with a 3d manipulation and gave you idea what you should do inside a classroom what you should do outside a classroom what you should do on separate areas so you can know which one is important for you for investment now and you can plan your investment throughout the year and on the next year also so what we did is uh, on our website you have something called a 3d view so where whatever i was showing on ppt if i click here on this it will take me to uh, uh, the website where there is a complete 3d view of how a digitalization should occur on a classroom so what do you see is whatever i was showing is is basically this now if i go here this is my entrance area of a campus if i go here this is a general classroom this is a halfway this is advanced classroom this is a lobby this is a auditorium and this is a hybrid classroom so if i want i only want to invest on hybrid classroom go inside a hybrid classroom you will have a complete virtual like this you can go to any of particular say and see what is required like that when you go to a general classroom what is the digitalization required now if you go to a advanced classroom what is required so uh, this is what uh, we are trying to say is when you are really talking about your institute you are talking about your solution you are talking about adaptation of 
digitalization how samsung is helping you is giving you a idea okay if you want to just convert a single classroom into a hybrid classroom what are the component required what are the basic advantage of that and how samsung can help you same thing for a normal classroom or any part of your college any part of your school how that can be digitalized is there virtually available which will be easier for anybody who is working on conversion can take the help of this particular virtual uh, tour and get to a particular conclusion ki this is the digitalization they want now which is feasible technically and which is feas feasible through a finance one and that uh, ends my presentation thank you very much Thank you so much, Mr. Chakraborty. Before we conclude today's webinar, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Reboot at Infocom India 2023. As you all know, our next edition of Infocom India will be held in Mumbai from 25 to 27 October at Geo World Convention Center. And you can see more information on our website, www.infocom-india.com. Our VBooth at Infocom India shall empower you to discover participating exhibitors with solutions you are interested in much before the physical exhibition. By logging on to our website, you can now explore the products and solutions our exhibitors have to offer through content-rich multimedia presentations, engage with exhibitors before the show, and make appointments to meet them face-to-face -face at the in-person show in October. All these shall make your visit at Infocom India more fruitful. Here's the sneak peek for your reference. With so many exhibitors at Infocom India, who should you meet? With limited time, how would you identify exhibitors with solutions that match your needs? Start your search with VBooth. Visit the official show website and select your industry and solutions of interest. Instantaneously, you will get a list of selected exhibitors. Learn more about each selected exhibitor and their solutions through their VBooth, enriched with engaging multimedia content. Shortlist exhibitors with solutions that best match your needs. Send requests to meet at the show. VBooth, making your visit to Infocom India a highly efficient one like none other. You can scan the QR code to directly land to our website and explore the solutions our exhibitors have to offer. With this, we'll conclude this webinar. Thank you very much to all. We wish to see you at Geo World Convention Center in October. Thank you. <laughs>